I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a very good friend of mine. I haven't seen him in quite a while, and a lot of you might be wondering what had happened to him. If you've been following his Instagram, he had a major episode uh, with his heart, and a lot of people uh, thought we might have lost him. Luckily, I am here to say we have not lost him. He is back, healthy again, and uh, going to tell us his story. Martin Kellstrom. Man, you've gone through a lot of stuff over the last, I'd say, five to ten years. Uh, it's like your life is like a, a big roller coaster, huh? Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Yes, it, it's been really, really crazy. But I think actually that everything that has happened to me is meant to be because the one I am today, I wouldn't be that if not everything had happened. So it's been a lot of crazy stuff yes and now this last that happened december 14 uh, it's been the absolutely roughest time uh, roughest stuff in whole my life and my kids and my family's life uh, ever and and um but still i think this was meant to be exactly at the minute because it was meant to be that still be on earth uh, because I have so much to to spread to other people, so much love, um, and um, I have a lot of people I help. And um, if if this had happened like three minutes earlier or fifteen minutes later on this day, I wouldn't be here. So I I, I was really really. I think I have a guardian angel somewhere. Yeah, I think sky. so too. Uh, for people who don't know you, we'll pull up some pictures uh, from your Instagram and some from online. Uh, Martin was probably one of the biggest bodybuilders in the pro ranks, so competing over 300 pounds. I mean, I've seen you before. We did some great videos of you at my old facility I had out back in New York. Uh, we had you up on a crane, and we were lifting you up on a, on a, <laughs> a pallet yeah. jack. It was pretty funny. And, I mean, you were one of the bigger guys back in, in the day, and, you know, at some point, you know, we all know intuitively that we have to lose some weight, right? Because we want to live a long time. But it's hard to, to do it. You're on your own. Just stop. Do you, I mean, you say just earlier that this, and we're going to talk about what happened. All this stuff happens for a reason. You think that was the reason, hey, someone was telling you up there, Martin, it's time to downsize a little bit. We gotta, you got you to gotta live a long time because you got a lot to give back to life, to your kids, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I actually don't think it was meant just to, to downsize myself, but I think it was, it was on a much, much deeper level, a spiritual level. Uh, I know, I mean, I've been like 135 for a long time. That's about 300. I don't know how much that is now. Two what is 135? It's, it's a lot of weight. <laughs> it's over 300 yeah, pounds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm 49 years and I've been very, very tired the last three years and I do three sessions six sessions a week and and I had my work at YouTube and stuff so uh, I, I I just think it was on the right time to 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 say hello and uh, of course I miss my muscles I do I know I, I have already gained like five kilos in one week just to be home but I, I have understand that I can't wait 135. I mean, I will probably live like 120 when I start training, but yeah. there's so much other stuff I do. And so, I mean, so much love that I have got from like 3,000 private messages this, this seven weeks. I'm totally blown away. So much love people have wrote to me and that I helped them through COVID. Helped them uh, with, they have like, partners or parents or kids that have died in COVID, that have cancer, that have drug problems. And 
just to listen when I speak and talk have saved their life. So all this give me so fucking much power. So I know that I'm here to do something so much bigger than just be muscular. I mean, I've been on stage and that, and I, I love that. And I love the muscle. I love the training. I love the pump. But there's so much more things that are important in the world. And right. how the world looks today, there have to be more people that do good stuff, like a storyteller, that so you, so you can educate p- people um, um, instead of just people don't go to school and educate people um, in a way that they want to listen. And social media today is like 90% fake. So I feel that if I talk from, speak from my heart, whatever I do, whatever I say, I mean, I cried in a couple of the videos and that, that cuts people's eye and the cuts people's heart. And right. the only thing that are important, I mean, cars, houses, uh, mommy, that that's so unnecessary if you not feel good inside. If you have like $10 million or if you have $10,000, doesn't matter if you're not so happy. So I, I, I want people to, I want people to feel good inside. I don't care about the outside anymore. And I, I, I have focused on the outside for so many years. And that is so totally waste of time. I mean, <laughs> the sport is nice and we love it. You love it too. Of course. But there's something so much bigger and that is what I'm doing. I don't know exactly what this will lead to, but I feel, and every time I go to bed, I pray a uh, thanks, uh, I kind of uh, preach that I'm thankful of being here, thankful of my kid, thankful of everything, everybody in my life. And I feel so good. I mean, I have had, I've been in prison, I've been in newspapers, they hunted me over the world. I had believed me for 20 years. So, I mean, I have so much experience and uh, I just have to, to it, it's, it's, um, Martin, oh, Martin, let me, I don't have to interrupt you, but um, give us an idea of, just for people who don't really know what, what happened. Give me the whole day that this, this all went down. How, you said it was back yeah. in December. Where were you? Yeah. What happened? And, and, yeah. and how'd you wind up in the hospital? Um, as usually, I did a couple of hours of work in the morning. I had a meeting with a friend and uh, I went home, dressed for training, took my shakes and I drew to my uh, physiology because I'm going to fix my shoulders this day. I go to him uh, twice a week okay. and uh, he, I was laying on my stomach. Everything was usual and he used the massage gun on my left uh, shoulders and triceps. Right. And I just said, shit, it, it, this, this, is re- this is really hard, this machine. And then he walked around me and my legs started shaking and my r- eyes rolling and uh, blah, 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 like this. And uh, the bench was very high. So he had to put down the bench and he put me on the floor and it, it really hurt me. But I, did, I don't and I remember anything. And he started to... to uh, do um, heart and um, yeah, I don't know what it like CPR. In, in, they started to do heart in, compressions. In English, but uh, yeah, ex, 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 exactly. He started that, and um, he called on the receptionist. So they called one 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 two, hmm. and um, they also have a heart starter at the gym. Oh, they had a defibrillator. So he, he used this three times. So, yeah, defibrillator. That's. So they right. sh- they sh- actually shocked you. That three they shocked times you. On me and the ho- yeah, yeah. My my, my Napraport did this, and it's my heart stopped. Wow. But he's still going with the with the rescuing, and after nine minutes, I think the ambulance were there, and they have you know a much much stronger one. So sure. Yeah. When I took that, it it stopped from the beginning, and then I was in in respirator for almost three weeks and the hospital and um, I was another three weeks and I stand up again. Do you remember being shocked, so Martin? A, no, I, I don't remember anything. Okay, that's good. Probably a good thing. You don't he, 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 
yeah, even the days before, I don't remember what I did. So it's uh, something come back to me, but uh, it's very dim. I, I don't really remember it. Did you um, did you have like a you know an out of body experience at all, or or is it just all blank to you? Yeah, I I dreamt uh, a lot of things. Um, and uh, the most scary thing was uh, a church <laughs> with people in, and it was uh, actually a cowboy, a, go a girl dressed in white, like a cowboy. And right. it was a very, very strong light. And this I, I remember over and over again. It, I don't know what it was, but it was, it was strange. That's the only thing I can say. Do you think that was, uh, uh, do you think you like went over to the other side for a little bit? Did you leave your body, you think? I have thought a little about that, and, and um, I can't say that I didn't. So, so yes, maybe. I, I, I haven't speak with so many people about this, but it was, it was, um, it was strange because I wrote. They did like a, a book. They wrote in every day the, the nurses when I was sleeping. So they want to when they wake me up. They said that uh, today we brought your teeth, today we cleaned you up, today you stop breathe. So maybe it could be the time when I stop breathe for a while. Yeah, yeah. It, was it was really, really tough time there. So they did a good job. Uh, I, I, I could have been dead there too. So It's amazing. Yeah. You had no residual damage from all this? No, that, that, that is the crazy stuff. That is the crazy stuff. They did... Um, a magnet x-ray on my heart yeah, and MRI. my lungs because I had double side infection in both my lungs wow. and uh, they also x-ray my brain because my heart didn't didn't uh, pump for a couple, yeah, for a pretty long while and they, they haven't found any injuries at all so okay I have my heart and everybody know your bodybuilder, you have used a lot of steroids, and the heart is a muscle, sure. so the walls on the heart is thicker. But that was not the case to the heart stop. Mm -hmm. They can't say why I got it just that time there. What, is it possible that because of all the inflammation, because of the lung infection, that maybe that's what stopped the heart sometimes? You know, if there's too much pressure around the heart because of fluid buildup, that could be a problem too. Yeah, it, was, it was a very stressed week and we did uh, a YouTube uh, video. So we worked from 8 to 8 Saturday mm -hmm. and, and almost the whole Sunday. Right. So I was very tired and uh, I was, I mean, YouTube, I have fun. I like to do it, but... I don't feel stressed, but people around me say your phone always it's ring every time. You you know by yourself yeah. it, it's on twenty four seven. You internalize and, it, yeah, and, exactly. And I help people all the time. I mean, I I work more for free than I work for money today. So uh, of course it take any day. I'm forty nine. I'll be fifteen in September. Right. So I think the combination and, and also everything I've gone through all these years, I am in the same time I have, I have known and I feel inside me that something will happen sometime. I just don't know what, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why I felt like that, but right. I have actually done that for quite a while. Well, I got to tell you, you know, I've known you for a long time. And I'm very happy to hear. I was very worried for you, first of all, when I first heard it. Because a few people told me, they texted me and said, hey, did you hear what happened to Martin? And I hadn't, and they told me. So I was worried. You saw I reached out to you. I, you got back to me. I, I don't remember how long it was. But um, I had seen your, you, your Instagram, and I, and I saw what you were, you, know, you were doing it all in, in Swedish, I think. So I really couldn't understand it. But then you got back to me and told me what happened. And so yeah. I was very concerned, obviously, since I know you for a long time. I know you're a good guy. And so I'm glad to hear, number one, that you're feeling better and that there was no damage to you and that you, you, know, you got a different outlook and mindset. And I think, yeah. like you said, sometimes things happen in life and you spoke, how you respond to them will define the rest of your life. And it seems like you're in a good place now. You, 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 know, you figure, I'm almost 50 years old. I accomplished everything I have to in bodybuilding, and now it's time for the next chapter of my life. And so, luckily, you didn't have to have any permanent damage done to you to make that decision, 
Because unfortunately, a lot of people wait till something seriously happens to them uh, before yeah. they make a decision like that. You know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. No, I, I'm I'm very very happy. And this is uh, can sound a little strange, but uh, my body and and my brain when things like this happen, it's like. I get excited because now I have to do a hard journey. <laughs> I know it would be a rough time, but I had new goals. Today was the first time my friend drove me to, to the supermarket. Right. And then it's, it, uh, <laughs> it was like a punch in my stomach. Uh, it, wasn't, it, was, it was much, much harder to buy groceries <laughs> than I thought it was. <laughs> but it, I had pain in my shoulders, pain in my back. Yeah. Uh, pain in my legs. I have pain everywhere. I'm uh, sure, and I get very tired. But I, I all this time I think very, very positive. Yeah. The only time when I actually was a little depressed it was last Tuesday when I read the the diary from from the nurses. Then I start crying, and I cried for like one hour. And my daughter was in the kitchen, and she never ever seen me crying. Yeah. And uh, I haven't cried since, I don't know, 10, 15 years. So it was so much that come up to the... Um, Why did you cry, uh, Martin? I don't know. It, uh, in, that, in that time when I read it, it was suddenly reality. Mm. Because I don't remember anything. So I, I, haven't, I haven't really understand. And still today, I don't understand exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I visited the guy yesterday, uh, not yesterday, Friday last week that uh, that saved my life, and we sat down for like thirty minutes, and and it I was very like shaky because, wow, it it was this was the biggest time for me and the biggest time for him in his life. Sure. So so um, you're lucky he responded so quickly. I don't know if a lot of people would have known what to do. You know. So no, if if I I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't be here now. Yeah. So I, I was on this right place exactly on the right minute. And, yeah. and, and I actually think this was meant to be. And, and uh, I, I look forward to go to the gym. Uh, I'm not going to do six sessions a week anymore, but I will start with four when I'm, 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 I'm able to, to start training. And, and uh, I will always train because that's my life. But I will do now when I haven't, I haven't trained in almost eight weeks now. And it's okay. Right. right. It's the first time it's actually okay. Now, be because you, you don't really know what happened or what caused it, does that make you a little nervous? Because, I mean, what do the doctors think? Could it happen again? I mean, no one seemed to have found anything wrong with you aside from the lung infections. I mean, was, is this something that you have to be concerned about happening you know, yet a second time? Uh, I, I try to not think about it, but of course I think I, I do. I do, but not... I, I, the thing is, you have to, to, to focus on the things you can control. You can't focus on things you can't control. Yeah. So, and I, they actually have done an uh, operation on me. It's uh, called uh, an ECD. It's a heart starter uh, up in the chest. It's it's very it's it's much. They say you won't see it, but I see it. I got Tell one. Me. I got I, one. Don't worry about it. I've talked about it before. I got a defibrillator too because I have an, uh, I have an arrhythmia. Yeah. So, and. and um, so long, it, everything is perfect. The blood pressure is, has been perfect yeah. since the day I come to hospital. Uh, but I see this and I get remembered every time. But it, it, I mean, it's just, it just a vision. It's just what you see. It's, it's not the inside of me. I'm it's backup. Martin. My wife calls it backup. It's, I'm like Iron Man. It's I got a, a backup, backup now. You know? So if this happened again, <laughs> then it's okay if I'm alone. Then I will survive. Right, right. Uh, no, I think I a lot of people to... are afraid, uh, Martin, of doing stuff like that. And you know, they had suggested when I was when I had the myarrhythmia, and I found out I didn't I didn't have what happened to to you happened to me. I just found out about it because I was riding cycling, and I noticed my heart rate would jump up out of nowhere. And they yes. said you probably have had this your whole life, but you know, as you get older, it it, it manifests more. And so I yeah, chose. Yeah, it catch you up. 
Yeah, I, well, I chose because I have kids, you know, to, to, to put, put the device in so that if, like you said, if it ever happened again, for God forbid, at least you get the thing shocks you and, you, and you're back to normal. So save yeah, your life. Yeah. So yeah. I think there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I, 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 I was pretty quick to say yes to. Yeah. I, I just figure out when I sit, sat with the doctor and she tell me how it works and I say, do you want to have this? It, it's not sure you can get it, but we will have a discussion to, to tomorrow with other doctors. And uh, so then she come back to me and say, yes, we are allowed to put it in you. And I say, yes, let's do it. So it was right. a two and a half hour surgery, just uh, not on the narcos, just the local um, sure. injection. So I was awake and talk with the doctor all the time when they put it in. And I, that that's it's like take the car to a garage and, and fix it. Yeah, I was I was not awake. <laughs> I, I never. That must be something they do over there in Sweden. They don't do that in the United yeah, States. Yeah, it's crazy because yeah. <laughs> you know when you do it local like this, an injection. Yeah. After after like twenty minutes, you start to feeling and it it, it hurt like hell, and they give you more, and then after a couple of minutes, it hurt again. Yeah. It was, I don't think everybody will will manage that pain. It it was actually painful. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never heard of anyone being awake to put a defibrillator in, but you know what? No, I no, I, I, I didn't thought that too. <laughs> so, I mean, if the doctor say it, then, then I'm awake. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people uh, don't realize, Martin, a lot, and sometimes it could be because we could self-induce it, but you know, when you build your heart, like you said, your heart gets a little bigger, sometimes it takes longer for the signal to kind of pass through a thickened uh, left ventricle, and so sometimes that can cause arrhythmias. They don't really know what, what does it, but... Uh, there's a lot of athletes, professional athletes, that, that, that drop dead on a basketball court or playing yeah. sports that have an arrhythmia that didn't know they had one, and that's why they die. So it's almost, you know, if, if you have it and you find out about it, it's a great idea to get something like this because it is backup, and you do have a family, and you don't want to die for no apparent yeah. reason just because you have a weird rhythm in your heart. So this is a, you know, this is a good lesson out there to, for other people if yes, you have yes. an arrhythmia, yeah. don't don't be afraid to, yeah. to, to have it you know treated no, or no, to absolutely. get the device. And yeah. that's also why we sit here today to to spread this to, to other people, so so they can. It, this will save life. And and I mean, I go every six months to the doctor because right. I mean, you you get often you get some. I mean, I was pretty big, and it was it was been a lot of product in my body. And it's not healthy. Um, that's the way it is. So I, I still go every six months, and then they do the EKG, EKG yeah. and everything been all right all the time. And suddenly, this come. Yep. No, that's what. It, that's that's feel, how it happens. I, you know, that's how it happens. Like, you find out. I mean, like this you. last year, I have been my happiest ever in my life, and uh, every my business work good, my kids is good, and everything was has been good and then boom so well think about it martin would you have rather that it had happened when you were not good and you were in a bad place you might not have been able to get through it so no, no, no your, your no. body I'm very the, happy. the universe I'm very happy. no the universe gives you what you're capable of handling so i, I guess you know if this was going to happen this was a good time to happen because you were in a good mental state yeah um what you know I want to go back a little to bodybuilding for a minute because you were one of the more extreme bodybuilders out there you were one of the biggest guys out there what, now that you're not you know, in, that air, in that realm anymore, uh, that space, what was the craziest, biggest steroid cycle you ever took? Do you remember what the, what the dosages were? Wow, that, that, that was... Uh, you know, it's it, it's been a lot of stuff. Yeah. No, <laughs> I know. I believe I, mean, I know. I want you to the, just the, tell the, people. The thing, the thing is, uh, when I hear... I don't want to say in the names, but I mean, these... A lot of the guys that are the top in the world, and and when they talk about steroids, I mean, and also like yeah, nothing bad about Rich. We work together and travel together, and I love that guy. But if you're gonna talk about it, tell the truth. I mean, you don't need to say that you take 500 gram test and uh, uh, 500 gram deca a week and some Diana <laughs> ball. I mean. It's just stupid. S say the truth or, or do nothing at all. Right. And and um, and, and um, tell the young people that do this how to do it. 
uh, instead of they they try to do everything by themselves and listen at the neighbor and the other guys at the gym. Uh, I um, yeah, it's been a, must be a lot of grams. I mean, I actually for for long time ago, I think two thousand two or something. Uh, we tried for one month to do one gram test a day. Oof. But, yeah, we, we did. I did that, but I never ever been in that again. We did it for one month, and that was totally waste of time. Yeah. But 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 say up to like three gram test, and then you have equipoise and masteron or something, and then when when you compete, there is tons of different drugs. So, right. Yeah. It, it it's crazy. I I, I wrote, write a book, and there we will have the the totally the total true can, what I have done and not have done. So can, Martin, uh, can I can I tell the story about when you when you when you came to my house that time with the suitcase? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Martin Martin had he comes to my house. You know, he's traveling. You know, and he has suitcases. So I'm thinking he's got all his clothes and his toiletries in there. The suitcases were just right. All the anabolics. <laughs> yeah, it was everything. Not only, but but I had it with me. So I mean, it was the biggest suitcase crazy. I've ever seen, full of stuff. I was like, "Holy mackerel!" <laughs> Even it's, I was it's, like, "It's crazy! Oh. It's crazy!" It's um, yeah. Uh, today I don't even believe that we could could do that what we did. So yeah. But you know what? But yeah. did, did, I want to preface and, and one this by thing, saying one thing more. You, you hold on, I just want to say one more thing, then you can go to finish. Martin, not only, look, we all took anabolics, but you yeah. trained like a maniac. You ate perfectly. You got all your food in. You were not just a guy who did drugs. You did the. You lived the bodybuilding lifestyle to the nth degree. There was there was no one who did anything better than you could. You you yeah. completely were consumed with being the best bodybuilder you can be, and that's why you were so big and so ripped because. You did everything. You didn't just do drugs. You, you did the entire bodybuilding thing. You know, never missing a workout, getting enough sleep. You know, and that's an important thing to preface because I think people think it's just drugs. Absolutely not. No. You could have taken all those drugs. You never would have looked the way you did if you didn't live the lifestyle. No, no. It it's a twenty four seven work. I mean, I always wake up in the night and have a sh shake with protein, oats, banana, fats uh, yep. on my. Uh, side of the bed I take uh, and, and uh, I eat a lot of food and I mean I did everything and the, the crazy thing was that if I had downsized me a little I would probably place much much higher but I really loved the size it, it was <laughs> it was it was the game play um, size play it was bigger better faster so uh, yeah it, it was not that, I mean, I, I know you, you're not beautiful when you are 320, but it wasn't about the beauty or the vision. It was just the size and the strength. That was, that was my passion. Uh, and, and go to the gym and have this crazy pump, seven in the morning, seven in the evening, <laughs> six, days a, six days a week. It was, I, I, I don't regret it. I mean, okay, if I had trained a little lighter, maybe took a little less drugs and enjoyed life on the side a little more, <laughs> I think I would have placed much higher. Yeah, maybe. But, yeah, probably. But when I, I was focused like this and I lived in Sweden, I had no backup at all. People that live in, in US and, and other side of the world, they, they have s such a backup. In Sweden, it's, I mean, when you walk like 300 pounds and walk on the street, People look at you. The police hunt you, and, and wow. Um, yeah, well, you had a lot I, of I problems with legal aspects there. We know that that country does not like anabolic steroids, and they certainly were yeah. after you big time. It's an, yeah. I, I'm so happy that you got out of that mess because that was. If you go back and watch our other interviews, Martin had some terrible, terrible dealings with the police there, and had to like go through a lot of drama yeah. with that. Even even Interpol searched me, so that yeah, was it's crazy. crazy I mean, and you were living in I, England. I, I didn't. I didn't have to pay the flight ticket home from UK. The, the, <laughs> the state did that. They, yeah, they flew you on Con Air. It's called. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs>
Unbelievable. Mark, you, you've had uh, a you, crazy you, you life. You must see from the positive side. Yeah. Whatever happened, you have to be positive and, and laugh because otherwise it's very hard and gray life. Yeah. Look, I know people that, that don't, aren't able, aren't resilient. That's the word, resilience. Because so many things will happen in your life. So many things get thrown at you. It's how you respond to them and alter the course of where you're going. And that defines you really who you are and, and how your future is going to play out. Some people just dissolve and go down the toilet bowl. Other people, like yourself, reinvent yourself and you find something else that's more important and you, you embrace that and, and you, 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 know, you change who you are. And I, you know, I, I champion myself on doing that, always reinventing myself. And you have to be able to do that. And like you said, you were lucky that you were in the right place at the right time. You took the message that you received from up above and now you're going to use it and go in a different direction. And, I, and, I, and I, once again, I respect yeah. that. And the reason I had you on the show is because I want people to understand that you can't keep hitting your head up against the same wall. You're not going to go through the wall. You got to go in through the doorway. And so sometimes you have to alter course and you can't be afraid to make those changes even if you think in your mind, oh, I love bodybuilding, I can't give it up. Well, you know what? If Martin goes back to being 300 pounds again, he's going to die, you know, and I'm sure the doctors told him that. And so you can't do that. You've got to reinvent who you are. And, and something is also that uh, the whole career is like a big, big honeymoon. And when you stop do the shows, the honeymoon is over. Yep. And, and you come to a regular, normal life. <clears throat> And to everyone that are like bodybuilding, fitness, and, and compete and this, everybody that are good on this are good on other stuff in life. You just have to believe in yourself. If you can be a good bodybuilder or fitness girl or whatever you are, then you can do whatever you want. Right. You can make money. You can get famous. You can relax. You can go out fishing. You can you can do exactly what you want. There is mm. no there is no limit what you can do with your life if you can build muscles and live that hard life. Because there's no sport that sport that is so hard as bodybuilding. So can you do bodybuilding? Yeah. You can do whatever you want. So so don't get depressed if you not can compete anymore because you get injured or like this happened to me. Remember, there is only one of you, whoever you are, you have one, only one of you in the whole universe and take care of that and do something, other thing that get a new passion. Yep, I agree. Very wise words from a good, good man. And uh, Martin, thank you for joining me today, updating us on what happened to you health wise. And I'm so happy, really, I am heartfelt and happy to hear that you're doing yeah, well. Yeah and that you're going to be moving forward the next stages of your life and that your kids are going to have their, their father around to, to yeah. be there for them. I'm that's all, I, a great, really I, great I will thing. also start, uh, because I have a lot of uh, English-speaking fans, so my YouTube are now on, on Swedish and the most on Instagram and social media on Swedish, but uh, we have a plan here and we're building a platform and, and we will, in the future, so soon future, we will... Uh, go over to speak English because uh, they text me private and uh, ask what I talk about. So yeah, well, you know what the truth uh, is, you speak very English very well. So you should have both yeah. platforms because you 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 know you can speak English really well, and a lot of people want to know, yeah. you know, some of the wisdom that you have and uh, what you did over the yeah. years and and stuff like that. So you got yeah, a lot there, to give back. There's so much. There's so much things uh, that I can do, and what I have done with like so many hundreds of hundreds of people here mm -hmm. i can do that on the rest of the world too so, so follow me and see what i do it's uh, it's pretty amazing and and i can just say this that i had like three thousand private messages on instagram wow du during three or four weeks when i was in hospital mm. and and this message was so much love and and uh, I, I, it I almost start crying again, and this has given me so much power. And 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 people really listen and, and take me to the heart. And, and I I want to do this outside Sweden because I can have so much more people. Sure. 
and it responds everything I do responds back to me. I'm I'm sure that also why why uh, uh, him somebody of this god or whatever he called uh, wanted me to stay here because that I do is important in this world. The world is really crazy now with yeah. COVID and everything else and uh, yeah, US and oh, shit. It's crazy, but I mean, I'm here. I'm yeah. still here. You are, <laughs> and you're going to be here. You know what? I, I, I think people, re a lot of people reached out to you because sometimes we hear these stories about people having these terrible things happening to them, especially with COVID, and we find out they're dead. And yeah. It was like a blessing to have, you know, be able, people to reach out to you when you were sick and to find out, you know what? He's not sick. He didn't die. He's still with us. And so it was like, yep. it's almost like, oh, thank God we saved someone. You know, this guy is still with us. Yeah, he had a yep. terrible thing happen, but he beat it. And, you know, now he's here with us. And so that's, I think people can relate to that. There's a lot of sadness going on in the world now. And so I'm glad yep. that you're an inspirational story for our community. And you know what? Like I said, if people want to reach out to you, your Instagram, they can PM you and contact you over there. And uh, I appreciate you coming on the show it was so honestly, Thank Martin, you. and uh, talking to the audience. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. And uh, take care of you and your family and um, the whole bodybuilding fitness world out there. Uh, God bless you. Fuck, you. this is a nice sport, but take care of your health. It's, it's important. Absolutely. I will second that for sure. And remind you guys, make sure you get your health screenings, get your blood work done. Don't stick your head in the sand. Don't wait until something bad happens. I'm Dave Palumbo with Martin Kellstrom for another installment of Live With.